All right, now we're just gonna start taking out the intake goodies. Take this guy out. Easy peasy, that's the intake. We need to disconnect the O2 sensor connector, which is back here. You probably won't be able to see this, but here's the connector. There you go, that's disconnected. And then we're gonna undo all of these bolts right here. These are 14s and then we can go down there and disconnect the header itself. Okay, that works on some. That's not gonna work. Now we just wiggle this thing out slowly. Okay. Without jacking up too many things. Be a little tricky. Like no space over here. Taking out the header was a total bitch because I have the um, the butterfly brace. So we'll go down here and I'll show you what the hell that is. It's this dude right here. So the exhaust was chilling literally right there on this little area right here. And uh, it kept getting hung up. There's the tranny. But without the tranny or the tranny, without the uh, exhaust, kind of brace, and that, that's the butterfly brace, I guess. Um, so without the butterfly brace, this would be a billion times easier. <laughs> so what I did was I literally just use a, used a hacksaw and cut it. Not really a hacksaw, but like a sawzall. And, um, cause I didn't want to take this thing apart. Taking this thing apart is a total bitch, a total bitch. So if you guys ever installed one of these, you'll see why. Um, I have a, install episode for this and you might or you have seen it or probably already released um, when this video comes out but it's a total bitch to install that metal section that's why flying miata actually redesigned the butterfly brace to the version 2 which is easier and cheaper um, easier to i guess uh, install and cheaper so today we're gonna drain the coolant we're gonna drain the oil and then start doing the, uh, the actual turbo install. All right, so we got the, what is that, belly pan splash guard. I guess it's a splash guard removed. So now we got plenty of room down here. As you can see, the light also helps because now we can see, and there goes my 10 millimeter. We're trying to run away again. Guys always trying to run away. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the pet cock right here, drain that, release the uh, radiator cap up top, and then we need to drain the freaking uh, engine oil as well. So let's do that. This is gonna be a mess. I already know it. Let's see. 17? Is that a 17? Or is that a 19? Ooh, it looks like a 16. It's a weird size, huh? Yeah, it is a 16. Right, so I got me one of these recycling uh, container from AutoZone. Hopefully it works. I wanted to use this because, look, it's just like a direct drop if I do this correctly. So what I'm gonna do is we need a 16 that's not Jaimungo. I guess it's only Jaimungo. Oh, I don't want shit on my gloves, so we're gonna take this off barehanded. Okay. 
Oh, here it comes. Perfect. There you go. So without the radiator cap removed, it's just kind of drizzling. So now we crack the radiator cap. It should just go all out. There you go. Easy peasy, no mess, baby. Woo! There it goes. No mess. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, take out all the radiator hoses. This is just for my application. Um, I'm gonna swap out the radiator because the petcock on the bottom kind of galled up while removing it, so now it's all cross-threaded and jacked up. I'll just... I'll just order another radiator, which is no biggie, no biggie. Um, the CSF guys are pretty good at that, so I'm just gonna hit them up, see if I can get a replacement radiator uh, sometime next week. It's really no rush, and um, that should be it. Now we're gonna take out the bottom um, radiator hose clamp, which is right here. And we're actually gonna swap out this radiator hose to uh, kind of move it away from where the turbo is gonna be. So we'd have to take all this stuff out anyways. It's just, I hate this metal tube assembly. Okay, Let's see if we can twist this out. And there you go. It's always a good idea to have a pan under, just in case. There you go, see, residual. Okay, that's good. We're gonna have some leaks, so as you see up there, I have a rag that the, um, the water outlets kind of just dripping on. And then I'm gonna take this out. What I'm talking about earlier was this, the petcock. It came off fine, right, remember? But when I put it back in, it, it started to gall up. So I backed it out, then it got stuck. Um, then I rocked it back and forth just to see if I could free it, and then that was it. Removing it earlier, it was kind of tight too, so I think it was just a bad fit. It's probably something from the factory. Um, CSF makes really good products. That petcock was probably something else. So, it's pretty easy to take out the radiator. Bolt here, bolt there, undo the connectors. There's two connectors, and then you just pull straight up, and it should free it, unless somebody wants to hang out and party. Like the easiest radiator to swap is the Miata, for damn sure. First thing we gotta do is pop off this intake bracket. Oh, there you go. Mm, nice. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we need to slot the frame rail here it looks like it's at 3.25, is that 3.25? Yeah, I can see it, 3.25, it's three and a quarter. And it looks like from the diagram they're showing that these two holes are the bungs right here. Or, there you go, that's better, you can see. So two bungs right here and then here, that's the shock tower. So we need to cut a slit right here. All right, so we're gonna tape where we're gonna cut. So I'm gonna cut from here to here. 
think that's pretty straight. Hopefully that works. So from there to there, and then from here to here, make that cut, and then from here to here, we make that cut. We got our tape lined up and we're just gonna cut that area right there. Flying Miata suggests that you trim each corner and then hammer it with a mallet. But um, for me, I think I'll just cut the whole thing out because I think it's cleaner. What I did here is just placed a bunch of old rags that I don't need that I'm gonna throw away anyways to catch all the metal shards. So let's get this going. I'm gonna use my AirCat air saw this is my favorite freaking tool ever. Use this on everything, and uh, this should do the job, hopefully. Perfect. All right, it's good. I'm just gonna cut this on an angle. All right, so we're done with the cut. As you can see over here, we have a nice, nice cut. That's using the hacksaw, no hacksaw. Actually, Flying Miata actually wants you to use a hacksaw on this, um, but I use the air saw. Super clean, check that out. Can't beat that, I mean, it's as clean as I'll ever get. Now I'll just use acetone and clean up the uh, marker right here. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is work on the oil return line. Uh, we just notched the frame and now we're gonna use the uh, 4A and 2A and 5A bags. So we're basically drilling the oil pan so we could put this nipple right here, this fitting for the oil return. So I'm gonna read this again, and then we'll continue onto the car. All right, so I'm gonna use my center punch right here. That should be good. Good enough? Okay, then we're gonna use our pilot drill bit right here. Ooh, someone's angry. Now poke this in grease. go. You don't want to drill too fast. You just don't want to blow through it and poke the uh, pickup. Next size up. All right, next one. I'm gonna go in as straight as I can. All right, so there's our hole for the oil return line. And um, the next thing we're gonna do is just tap it. 
It was kind of tricky to do this and it took a while, but it took like 10 minutes max. But we're very careful and make sure that we don't get shavings inside there because it's easy to get the shavings inside there. Here's a closer look. It's pretty damn clean. So the next thing we're gonna do is tap that hole and the kit comes with this tap already, which is nice because imagine if you had to find this. Here's how the tap looks after we freaking used it. Pretty damn dirty. Look at all the shavings on there. This is why you grease it up. Without grease, this is gonna give you trouble. Flying Miata says you need to get thread sealant that has Teflon. So Teflon paste will work. All right, here we go. Installing the goods. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. No, I don't know why the hell I can't find my sockets for this size. So I'm just gonna use this crescent wrench and make it work. Now, depending on how much you threaded, the uh, NPT tap will kind of determine how deep this thing goes in. So, as long as you go in as, as much as the thickness of the wall, then you're good. All right, so that's in there. Now, we're gonna release the oil drain plug, put a freaking catch can under it, and then get a funnel and dump some uh, mineral spirits in here to kind of clean the uh, bottom of the oil pan. I'm sure there's some shavings in there, not a lot, but we're just gonna clean it up anyways. And hopefully that does the job. I got a little bit of thinner on this bar here. Reacts pretty damn quickly too. Whoopsies. All right, so we drilled and tapped the oil pan and there's our oil fitting. Next thing we're gonna do is go up to the other side of the engine on the back right there by the yellow, yellow rag and undo this oil galley right there or oil orifice, whatever you call it. It's not used on, on the 94 NAs, but that's where we're gonna have the, uh, the oil feed line come out. All right, so we're gonna take out this oil plug right here on this side. Probably should have a rag on that, just in case it decides to jizz all over the place. Nothing, nice and clean. Okay. Take our fitting, this guy with the copper washer. Here we go. We got the torque spec. So we need to attach this dude like so. Okay, pointing forward. Just gotta make sure this thing's tight. Not ridiculously gorilla tight, just tight. Right, so here's a turbo assembly. Spent about an hour putting this thing together. 
It has pretty impressive hardware, as you can see. Pretty cool, I like it. The uh, ceramic coating really looks damn good, just right. So we're gonna put this thing together and see how it fits. There's no gaskets anywhere on this, by the way. So no gaskets here on the outlet, no gaskets here on the manifold. Pretty interesting. I always thought there was gaskets for everything, but um, I guess not. Hopefully it doesn't leak, but it's pretty tight. Like, and tolerances are pretty tight, so we'll see. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift the motor up from the oil pan just slightly to tilt this whole thing this way. I'm gonna undo one of my bolts down there for the motor mounts, and then we should be good. Ooh. I'm sure you're not supposed to install all this stuff yet, but maybe I didn't follow instructions. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no easy way to bolt this manifold in. And uh, this is very time consuming. The only way to do this is with this frigging wrench one by one, slowly. Can you torque it? You cannot torque this, my friends. There's no room. So you're just gonna have to make it good and tight and make sure you don't break the stud. The actual torque spec for this is like 34 foot-pounds or something from factory, but who knows, you know? Me with my baby arms, it'll probably take, I don't know, 40% of my strength to do that. <laughs> I don't know, or less, but someone like the rock can probably do that in, you know, 10% of his power. So what I'm saying is, um, just make it snug, but not ridiculously tight where you're overdoing it, you know, and you're gonna break the stud. You break the stud, you're gonna have a really bad day. And please don't jinx myself because I'm probably going to, hopefully not. So anyways, this is, this is the fun. It'll probably take you Depending on how fast you're doing this, I'm trying not to scratch up my nice ceramic job. Probably take you like a good 30 minutes to do all the bolts. Maybe, really depends. So I got this guy tight. Just wanna head, hold the head, snug it, reset, snug it again. That's pretty much it. I don't want to overdo it, but gotta make sure it's tight. There you go. Good, good. So I did the middle, these two, that, and we're gonna move out. So you wanna start with the middle, and then you go here, here, down, down, up, up, and that, and that. There's a shit ton of them, man. What, we got eight? Nope, nine. All right, after about an hour of uh, fighting this thing and some custom tools and ground this down a little bit, and that was the only way to do some of these corners. Now, I'm not a professional mechanic, so I don't have all the fancy tools, but I got enough. I mean, I got the swivel over there. I don't know what you really call it, but it's a swivel wrench, a couple of different sizes. I got my little flat, um, wrench, but it's still a little bit challenging. But they are all good now. So all the ones that you see with paint, they're already done. As you see right there. 
put paint on them so I know I know which ones are tight. All right, so what we're doing now is we're installing the EGR pipe right there for the Flying Miata kit. That's actually a uh, custom piece by them. And on the other side, it attaches to the runner number four, as you see right there. Right, so we got the EGR on. The next step is to install the downpipe. Now, I'm not sure if I can even really record this because the downpipe over there, if you guys can see that, or right there, that's gonna be a total bitch to work on. Okay. Oops, that's my butterfly brace. Now the fun part is, we need to put four washers up there without dropping any. All right, so here we go. See, we need to tighten these bolts, but this one behind the pipe is a total bitch. So we'll tighten all these up after we connect that guy over here. Then we should be good. All right, so we finished installing the manifold on there. The downpipe has now been installed. I just gotta tighten up the top bolts. And it's kind of tricky to get in there because there's really no room. So if we go down here, and the audio is probably gonna suck because I'm gonna hit this thing all over the place, but you can kind of see it right there, right? The downpipe. Now that's flexible, right? So you can lengthen it, shorten it if you wish, but it's tricky to tighten up the, the corners over there, the, the top bolt for the downpipe because there's just really no room to do it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the oil feed line. It shows it here. This is the guy that's labeled with this fancy little tag. And these guys are the water lines. But here it is. This is the guy with the tag. And it says route it through. What am I looking at? It looks like it's going through this way. So this side. The turbo. So it looks like it goes right here and attaches through this side. Before you tighten that fitting down, make sure you put a couple of drops of oil into the fitting and you should be good. This is gun lube. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this water hose. And this is actually a brand new water hose I bought last SEMA. So, a shame I have to take it off. I'll just save it for next time. Okay, so you pop these guys off. Come on. There we go. All right, so we're gonna route the top inboard one to the top and this bottom one down here. So luckily, I don't have any AC or any of that goodness. So I'm just gonna cut this to where it's nice and clean. Just fit. That looks good to me. Good enough. All right, so right now I'm using this two-ton jack to jack up the intercooler. Intercooler is pretty heavy, so if you're trying to measure while you're, you know, measuring <laughs> and holding it, it's a total bitch. So here's what we've got. The, uh, the unit's pretty damn big. 
but I think it's a perfect size because I have enough gap right here between the intercooler and the radiator and the front to create this um, hole here. Then we'll just have to figure out how to route the, uh, the piping for the intercooler, but I think we should be all right. Here it is. Looks like it's about 18 inches from the ground to where I have it. Um, from the bottom of the the mount right there, the mount, what do you call it, the, the shroud, it's 19. So this is the bottom of the shroud. This is the bottom of the intercooler. So I'm gonna let it hang down just a little bit because we have a lot of space up there anyway. So we should be good. All right, so the mounting system provided by Flying Miata obviously didn't work too well with the uh, with the Sheepy Race uh, intercooler because it's obviously a lot bigger. So here's what I did. I actually used the bracket that they provided and chopped off this little tab off it. You see that? And then I reused that tab for here. Let's see if you can see this. See that? I reused the tab to do a 90. It's not welded on yet, but as you can see, that's the setup. And it's mounted to the OE hole that was up here. You guys see that? I'm just gonna manually focus here because this thing's unreliable. So that's an OE hole right there for the, I think it's the AC, something for the AC. And down here, you see the rod go down into the tab right there. And the tab right there is uh, that piece that I cut off. So I'm just gonna reuse it and it lines up perfectly with what I need. All right, so we got the brackets mounted up. They work pretty damn good. I mean, I, I can't knock it. Look at that. Worked freaking perfect. Perfect. Both sides. Come on, you can focus. There you go. One thing I wanted to mention here was this piping right here does not meet properly with the giant intercooler that I made. This is made for the FM stock intercooler. So um, I got a couple of parts here from my buddies at HPS. If you guys need anything that's just intercooler related, cooling related, silicone hoses, big or small couplers, uh, couplers and uh, piping, these are actually aluminum. You can go to HPS website and they carry everything you could possibly think of to make your own piping. I mean, everything, dude. Like, all sorts of crazy angles that I don't even have here. And um, clamps, they have all sorts of clamps. These are reducers and um, couplers, silicone hoses, aluminum pipes, and just regular straight pipe right here. So, um, they came to save me <laughs> because I would be pretty screwed because this right here, is a big problem. So um, we got the bracket right here. This is a, the, the OEM shroud that I cut up already. And you can see there's just a slight gap right there, which is good so it doesn't rub on it. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bracket that goes from that bolt hole right there, right there. And it's gonna be an L down to the bottom of the intercooler, which is right here, these bungs and um, it should just be a, a clean L. You'll see what I mean when I make it. I still have to get it laser cut and bent. That's it for now. Mm -hmm.